refer to my ranking member, Senator Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do note that the chairman of our full committee is here, and I don't know. I would certainly defer to you, Senator Murray. Great. Thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, appreciate the opportunity this morning to, as you note, Mr. Chairman, uh, to have this subcommittee examine the proposed budgets for both IHS and the Department of Interior, the two agencies responsible for tribal programs under this subcommittee's jurisdiction. But we're doing it for the first time here in one hearing, so I think it's going to be jam-packed. We've got a lot of grant to cover. I also want to point out that it's been several years now that we've had the opportunity to invite a confirmed IHS director to a budget hearing, so I'm particularly glad to have you here, Director So. Uh, I welcome both of you, Director So and Assistant Secretary Newland. This subcommittee has always worked together to fund essential programs that serve our tribes and Native communities, and whether it's health programs, economic development initiatives, education and workforce development, or critical water and sanitation infrastructure. I think we have made upholding the federal government's trust responsibility a bipartisan priority. It needs to continue to be so. In the last Congress, we secured advanced appropriations for the IHS. This was a long-held priority for Native communities. And, and we can't forget the, the great progress that we've made on these issues related to contract support costs as well as 105L tribal lease payments. I think this demonstrates that we can work together and when we do, we're successful. As we look to write the FY24 bills, it is my hope that we can continue our bipartisan tradition to prioritize the needs of Native communities. The President's proposal for the IHS includes an increase of $2.5 billion above the FY23 level, while the request for BIA and BIE outlines approximately $692 million in new spending. The FY24 budget request increases almost every budget line, with the only exceptions being congressional priorities. So I hope that after today, we all have a better understanding of our respective funding priorities, because reconciling the President's requests, congressional priorities, and quite frankly, the budget realities is going to take some compromise and a lot of dialogue. Many of the issues I intend to raise today will come as no surprise to, to you all. Uh, within the BIA, ensuring adequate funding for PL 280 states to address the inequities among tribal courts remains a top concern of mine, as is continuing funding for native language grant programs for non-BIE states and funding for missing, murdered indigenous people. In addition to safeguarding funds for the above issues, it's also important to ensure that the small and needy tribes, that supplement receives sufficient funding and is properly managed. Uh, the current Tawahi pilot sites and recipients be made whole, and that tribal management programs are effectively contributing towards economic development while meeting natural resource goals. In the FY24 budget proposal, there's also an Alaska-specific proposal on subsistence, and that is to, to shift the Office of Subsistence Management from Fish and Wildlife to Indian Affairs. Secretary Newland, we've had a, an opportunity to discuss this in, in the Indian Affairs Committee. I've heard from a lot of tribal leaders and Native communities over the years about Fish and Wildlife Service not giving this important office the attention that it needs, so I'm going to be interested in hearing more just about the practical implementation of this proposal, um, how it addresses the concerns of all stakeholders and the steps that you're taking to demonstrate that Indian Affairs can handle management of the rural subsistence priority for both Native and non-Native subsistence users alike. Similar to the Department of Interior's tribal programs over the years, my IHS priorities remained pretty much unchanged, ensuring funding for VBCs, village-built clinics, facilities construction accounts, along with programs that support the Alaska Dental Health Therapy, the AHATS, our community health aid programs. These are all vital for Native communities across my state. And of course, at both BIA and IHS, contract support costs and 105L lease payments, absolutely utmost importance. Ongoing questions surrounding these costs continue to spur court cases and trigger additional budget uncertainty. You know that as well as anyone. And it's for this reason, I would urge some caution in attempting to rename these terms just for the sake of simplicity. I think they're complex. They're legally defined budget issues that are rooted in statute and regulation and court cases. Our job here on the subcommittee is to appreciate and address the budget complexities without creating further confusion 
for the sake of political expedience. Another nuanced issue we need to discuss are the unobligated balances at IHS. And Director, we've talked about this. IHS has received more than $45 billion in regular discretionary and emergency funding over the preceding five years. They're carrying billions of dollars in unobligated balances. We have to have an open and a transparent conversation about these balances to ensure that IHS is providing the best services possible. And then lastly, the chairman has mentioned advanced appropriation. This is something that I've personally been supportive of over the years. As an original co-sponsor of a bill with Senator Udall that jump-started that path to the inclusion of advanced appropriations in the FY23 omnibus bill, I'm somewhat disappointed that the budget proposal does not focus on a successful implementation of advanced appropriations, but instead, against, again, proposes mandatory funding for IHS beginning in 2025 without any accompanying legislative text. We need to have that there. We all want the IHS to be successful and responsibly managed. So, Director So, I'm glad that you're in place to provide that leadership. Um, it's, it's a tough job, and we've talked about that. I'm looking forward to your testimony, as well as that from you, Assistant Secretary Newland. And uh, with that, Mr. Chairman, I thank you and look forward to the discussion this morning.